Welcome everyone to How to Get Tech Donations Before Fiscal Year End. Thanks so much for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Becky Wiegand and I'm the webinar host for today's event. And I'd like to make sure everyone's comfortable using the tool before we get started with the content of today's webinar. You can chat with us in the box on the lower left side of your screen at any time during the webinar to let us know if you're having any problems, if you're hearing an echo or need help with your audio or visual to let us know if you have questions for our presenters. Feel free to just chat in and let us know and chat with us as much as you feel uh, inspired to do. We will keep all lines muted today so we get a clear recording for our presenters and to keep and share after the fact. Most of you are hearing the audio play through your computer speakers, so if you're hearing an echo, you may be logged in more than once and will need to close an additional, any additional instances of ReadyTalk. If at any time the slides and the audio fall out of sync, we recommend dialing into the toll-free alternate phone number that Susan has been chatting out in the chat window. At any point you can scroll back up in your chat and find that number or just chat out to her and we can give it to you at another time. If you lose your Internet connection, reconnect with the confirmation or reminder emails that you would have received upon registering. Those of you who registered before this morning should have gotten an email about an hour ago, and that actually has the slide deck attached on the right side of that email. So a little link that says Presentation where you can download those slides and look at them with us if you'd like. But keep in mind that today's webinar, even though there are a number of slides in that deck, we will do a lot of this sharing our website live. So we include those slides just in case of any emergency, in case our site goes down, or, or, and just for you to have as a reference after the fact. But we will do a lot of this sharing live. If you are dialed in by phone and lose your connection, feel free to dial back into that number. And you can also reach out to ReadyTalk support at any time at this phone number. We will be recording today's webinar and we'll make it available on the TechSoup website. It's also where you can find upcoming events listed at TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. And you can also view them on our YouTube channel, view our slide decks on SlideShare. We're all over the web. So feel free to look around for us. You can also share any of those webinars with your friends and colleagues as we do license them Creative Commons. Within the next few days you'll receive an email from me with this presentation, the full recording that you can watch at your convenience if you miss any parts or want to re-watch what we showed, and any links that we discuss. If you would like to tweet with us on Twitter, you can do so at TechSoup or using the hashtag TSWebinars. Once again, my name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup. I've been with the organization for 8 years, and prior to that spent a decade working with very small little nonprofits, uh, small but mighty is like how I like to call them, uh, located in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California, where I was in your shoes. I was the person responsible for uh, figuring out our technology without necessarily having any technology skills. And um, many of you may have technology skills, but I certainly didn't, and uh, often had to pick out the hardware, software, figure out what kind of donations we could receive. And I used TechSoup uh, to access many of those donations uh, about a decade ago at this point. And so I'm happy to be in, in your shoes and in my own shoes as the host today, but I'm happy to come to this with the experience of having been in your shoes, hoping to get donations of technology for your organizations. We're also joined by Kay Henfield who is an Account Management Specialist here at TechSoup. And she's the person that you would encounter if you call our Customer Service Team, our Client Services Department. If you call needing help, she's one of the people that is on the other end of the line to help you solve those problems, those questions. If you get hung up with registration or you uh, find that somebody previously registered your organization and you don't know how to access your account, and you'd like to request donations on behalf of your org, she's the person that can help you do that. And so we're glad to have her on the line to help us walk through how to access those donations before the fiscal year end, which is coming up on June 30th. And she, uh, prior to working at TechSoup, she joined, I'm sorry, she worked with nonprofits that working with children, and also in customer service and as a paralegal. And she hails from Charleston, South Carolina. So we're glad to have her joining us. Um, you'll also see on the back end Susan Hope Bard who is our Training and Education Manager here at TechSoup, and she'll be on hand to help respond to you in the chat and help you with any technical issues throughout the event. Looking at our objectives for today, we would like for you to leave this event having a better understanding of the programs that are related to fiscal year end. So for those of you who may have a calendar budget that expires 
and you've got some budget that you can use up before June 30th for technology expenditures, we want to make sure you know how to do that and how to access the most uh, available to you. And especially if you need more than what the limits are for this fiscal year, that you know which, which types of products you can access again as of July 1st if you need more than what the limit is for right now. We'd like you to walk away being able to name at least three technology donation programs that are available to your organization that you find valuable, that you might think, this is something I want to check out more. We would like for you to be able to feel more comfortable with accessing the donations, and we want to be able to answer your questions. So we hope to do all of those things today. Those are our hopes, for, those are our objectives that we hope that you'll learn. But what I want now is to get your objectives because this will help guide us on today's webinar. What do you most want to cover today? So you have a variety of options on the screen, and you can click as many as you'd like. And I, I want to give a moment for everyone to be able to vote on these. Do you want to cover mostly uh, hardware donation programs, computers, uh, mobile hotspots, um, laptops, things like that? Do you want to learn most, a lot about the software donation programs? And feel free if there are specific programs specific donor partners like Microsoft or uh, Symantec or QuickBooks or Mobile Beacon or any others. If there are some specific ones you want to learn about, chat those in because as we walk through these, we can take time to use those as our examples. Do you want to know which programs are affected by the fiscal year change that's coming up on June 30th? Do you want to understand more about our admin fees? Are you brand new to TechSoup and maybe you need help with getting started with the joining as an individual and registering your organization. Uh, if most of you don't need that, we won't spend time on that. Um, so we'll, we'll do this to really tailor to what the folks who are on the line right now uh, really most want to get out of this hour. Do you want to walk through the process of how to request donated pro products? Do you want to see what kind of webinars, trainings, and events we have available? Look at eligibility and restrictions to understand what those are. Maybe you've hit that wall where you've tried to request something and it's not letting you for some reason and you want to understand why. Uh, maybe you want to see what kind of learning and community resources we have available. And if there's something not on this list, feel free to comment in chat because we're here to listen to what you guys need today so that we can show you what's most valuable. So I'm going to give just another couple of seconds so everyone has an opportunity to vote. And again, feel free to chat in if there are specific programs on our site that you are interested in hearing more about. If you want to know about the donation program of how Microsoft works, if you want to know about QuickBooks, if you want to know about Adobe, those are all different things that we can spend time on. So feel free to chat in. I'm going to show the results. It looks like I'm going to scribble these down right now. Software donation programs are number one. And hardware is number two. This does not shock me. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad that I um, anticipated those would be the things you'd most be interested in up front. And then webinars and events and trainings. Great. I'm scribbling down here. I can show you a handful of things on that. And then what do we have as fourth? Looks like requesting donated products is our fourth. All right, well we will try to cover many of these things, but I'm going to try to start with the things that you voted on as the most important. And I just want to read through some of the things coming in as suggestions. We have people suggesting mobile hotspots, QuickBooks. Let's see what else. Um, software hardware, point of sale system with QuickBooks. Unfortunately, I'll address that one right now. We don't actually have QuickBooks Point of Sale available through our donation program right now. Um, they offer their QuickBooks Premium, or sorry, QuickBooks, not Premium, Premier is I believe what it's called. Um, one user license, three user license, and then the QuickBooks Online subscription, which is an annual subscription. So right now, Point of Sale is not available. We are continuing to work with Intuit to try to make that available, but I, I have no promises on that yet. Um, so just to answer that quick question that came in. And then we have somebody asking about tablet donations. Great. Feel free to keep chatting in. Another person mentioning hotspots and service. So I'll be sure to cover a couple of – well, one option in particular with that. I'm just scribbling some notes here because once I start screen sharing in just a moment, I won't actually be able to see what things you've suggested that I talk about. So I'll be relying on 
Susan and Kay to tell me what things you're suggesting to help guide me when I start screen sharing. So thank you for chiming in. And feel free to continue doing so even after I start screen sharing. But quickly, just to give a little bit of background about TechSoup, those of you who may already be familiar with us, we are that bridge that helps connect the technology providers around the world to social do-gooders around the world, nonprofits, public libraries, churches, foundations, every place that's blue on the map, we are and have a presence through our donation partners around the world. Uh, go ahead and let us know from where you're joining today because we care about what you're doing and the kind of work you're doing and where you're doing it. So feel free to let us know in the chat window. If you're joining us from outside of the United States, I recommend visiting TechSoup.Global where you can select from this drop-down here to choose your country to find the local partner that may serve your donation needs. Today's webinar is largely going to focus on the U.S.-based program. So if you are joining us from outside the U.S., you'll find that some of these donation programs may not be available to you or may be available through a different partner, not through the TechSoup.org site. So keep that in mind. We have been doing this since 1987 and have so far facilitated the technology donations, uh, donations of, of products and grants to the tune of $5.2 billion with a B. So I'm proud to have been not only a user of TechSoup, but also a staff person at TechSoup. So before I start sharing my desktop, um, I just want to highlight who can generally access technology donations through TechSoup. It's nonprofits or public libra libraries with a 501c3 status. It's public libraries with an IMLS listing. It's friends of the library or library foundation groups with 501c3 status. It's many foundations and churches with or without 501c3 status. So many churches don't get a, a 501c3 status, but they fall under that umbrella with the IRS. If you are not one of these organizations and you haven't yet registered with TechSoup, your best bet is to reach out to our customer service at TechSoup.org to check in with them about whether you're, you're actually eligible. Uh, I see somebody chiming in that they're joining from Nigeria. Welcome. Uh, you likely will have to go through our TechSoup Africa partners to access some of these donations. And some of them will be different because some of these uh, that I'll cover today, in particular the mobile hotspots, are only based in the U.S. There may be some equivalent though in your area. So definitely um, go to that TechSoup.Global site to find our partner locally. Just highlighting quickly the programs that are affected by fiscal year end. This is super teeny, so I don't expect you to actually read this, but you can see that we have this link on our site and we can share this out um, that is called Programs Affected by TechSoup Fiscal Year End. And so what this means is that we have some partners that limit the number of donations you can access during the course of a given calendar year. Now that calendar year though doesn't go from January 1st to December 31st. It goes from July 1st to June 30th. So that's the fiscal year calendar that we work on and that many of our donor partners work on. So keep in mind that for those of you who mentioned QuickBooks, QuickBooks is managed and owned by a company called Intuit. Um, Intuit, for example, limits eligible organizations to one donation per fiscal year. So if you are needing QuickBooks and you want two licenses of QuickBooks, you could realistically request one license today, and you could then wait until July 1st and request a second license. So you are working on the same version, um, same year version of it, but you are getting to sort of double dip so to speak because you are requesting both within a short time frame at the fiscal year change. So this is where it becomes important. It's just knowing those, those uh, donation programs and the limits that they have. Many of them have one per year uh, with the fiscal year being the reset period. And if that's the case and if you are looking to access those donations, then it's ideal to do it now so you don't miss your opportunity for this year if you haven't already. And that way you've got another opportunity that's going to become available to you to get that donation again in just a couple of weeks. So I put that out there just so that people know where to find this information, and we'll share, share this in the follow-up email as well so that if there's a program on these lists that you're interested in, that you know where to find out if this is one that resets or not. Some of our bigger programs like Microsoft for example, 
is not affected by the fiscal year. They have limits that they set on an entirely separate calendar, and it's a two-year calendar. Um, so keep that in mind um, that not all of our programs, so these are the ones that are not affected by our fiscal year. These are the ones that are. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my desktop, and it will take just a moment for it to pop open. And then you guys can tell me, I'll close that out, what you're seeing. You, you should be seeing the TechSoup.org homepage. So go ahead and chat to Susan and Kay to let me know if you're seeing everything okay on our homepage. Right now I'm logged out. I'm not logged in yet. and I, I haven't technically joined yet, but since we only had a couple of people that were interested in seeing the register and join, I'll just say, this big orange Join button is where you want to start uh, to join. You'll need your employer identification number and a rough idea of your annual budget. And then you can go ahead and register your organization. You can also, whether you are registered with TechSoup or not already, I recommend this Check Your Eligibility Quiz. Because if you are not sure what kinds of programs you are eligible for, you can take this quick quiz. And you can also if you are already registered, you can log in first to see the list of all of the programs for which you are definitely eligible. So there might be stuff that you had no idea that, oh, I didn't know we could get Teespring which can help us make uh, cool fundraising t-shirts for our organization, you know, whatever random program it is. <laughs> so you can take this quick quiz to find out, okay, I'm a C3 nonprofit. I'm located in I'll pick Michigan because that's where I'm from originally. I'll select my org type and subtype. Now these are determined by the IRS's NTEE codes. We didn't make these up. And you pick what's closest to what your core mission is. So the work that you do every day, you want to pick what's closest. You may find that you realistically do two things on this list pretty evenly. And so I recommend taking this quiz twice, doing it both ways, and seeing which one is best for your organization. If they realistically and legitimately are both, then definitely go with the one that will get you the most don donations because you're not, you're not fibbing anybody. This is a very uh, – we're an honor system here. We want to make sure that grants are delivered in-kind donations are delivered to organizations appropriately, and we're trusting you to put in what's appropriate um, as to what your organization's mission and services are. So if I pick legislative and political activities, then I can, I can select, okay, I do voter education, the mechanics of registering and voting as my org subtype. Oops, it doesn't look like it selected it. Let me do it one more time. There we go. And I can put in my operating budget, and I'll say our operating budget is $350,000, and no commas there. And I can click to check my eligibility, and it will show me the variety of programs for which I, my organization is likely eligible. Now if I log in to do this, I'm just doing this for the folks that are brand new, but also if you're already registered, you can log in and I have a number of organizations that I'm um, already registered with. But I can go ahead and I can complete the eligibility check based on one of those organizations. So if I click on my membership, I've got a bunch of different here. So I'll say I'm testing out Youth of Tomorrow that I want to – oh, actually that's the one I was already active on. And I can see my registration and how I registered myself um, because maybe I've hit an eligibility flag when I've tried to request something, and it's told me that I can't request it. If that happens, you maybe want to go and check what your organization type is. And you do that just by clicking up here to see your organization name, and that will take you to your organization details and your profile. And you know, I made myself the Executive Director because yay for being all-powerful. Um, if you are needing help with requesting donations for your organization that somebody else originally set it up, if you are able to access that page with the organization details, this association code will help you as an individual become an authorized agent to be able to request on their behalf. So that's just a random thing since I'm on this page. But I can check the eligibility to see what programs I'm for sure eligible for. And that's a great place to start if you're not sure what, it, what you're looking for exactly. Now since people wanted to know most about software programs, one of the best ways to browse our site, I mean obviously you can go to whatever is highlighted here if you are interested in Adobe Premiere, if you are interested in um, 
you know, any of the articles or blog posts or upcoming webinars or products that are listed on our site. Obviously, if you want to know about Norton Security, you can just select it here, and that will take you right to the page. However, if you want to browse through our site looking for different products, you can click on this Get Products and Services up here. And this drop-down opens up with a variety of ways that you can browse our catalog. You can browse by donor or provider. So if you know that you are looking for uh, QuickBooks software, QuickBooks is not actually the name of the company that makes it, which I mentioned already, but Intuit is. You can go directly to the Intuit page of our site. This is their donation program landing page. And you can see information about it, a little, or little testimonial. You can see special offers on last year's version of the product. You can see the 26 version, what, what options are available. So we have Online Plus with uh, initial subscription for 5 users. You have Online Plus Renewal. So if you already are using Online QuickBooks, this is how you can renew it with a $50 admin fee. If you want to have the installed desktop version and you only need it for one person, it's available for you here. If you need it for three people, so for example if you need somebody, your operations person in-house is going to insert uh, reconciliations and expenditures, and you have an accountant that you contract with once a year just to do your 990 or other things like that, you would need this three user license one unless they have it already installed and you are working on the same version and they, they have their own. Um, so consider which version you really need because again, this program only lets you request one per year. Other programs have different rules. Some of them may let you request 50 licenses. Some of them might request, let you request 50 licenses of 10 different things. <laughs> like Microsoft is a really big program and has I think probably more than 1,000 different products in the catalog, and you can request a lot of a lot of them. Um, so just keep that in mind when you are looking. There's also QuickBooks for Mac 2016. So if you're using a Mac, you can request that here. So I'm going to go in and look at the QuickBooks Premier Editions 2016. This is the newest version. And it's the three user license. I'm going to say, yeah, I think I might need the three user license because I want to use it. And our executive director might enter in some of her own invoices and accounts receivable stuff. And then our, our accountant that we contract with who does some of our payroll and stuff, she might need to access it too. I can look at the description to see what the capabilities of the product are. Once you get it, this includes all of these different editions. So you can access the nonprofit edition if you want to use that. If you want to use a general business edition, that comes with it. And that's kind of the standard one that most people, uh, many people use regardless of sector. So you can see these details here. You can also scroll up to look at the system requirements. And often this will just link you off to the Donor Partners website. So this is just to make sure that if you are installing new software on an 8-year-old machine that your system, your hardware is going to be compatible. And so we don't typically write all of this out because it changes with every version. So we just link you to the page where you can confirm that your equipment will handle it. Um, but it's good to check that out first. And then we've also got this tab of Rules, Eligibility, and Restrictions where you can see organizations may request one desktop product or subscription renewal product per fiscal year. And they can request one initial subscription product within the time frame, lifetime of the organization. Meaning you can get QuickBooks Online initial subscription one time ever. And then after that you have to request the renewal product. So those are things to know. Budget, maybe you've hit the wall where you go, oh, I thought I should be eligible based on my organization type. But maybe you're not because of your organizational budget. So this one is for organizations with a budget of less than $10 million per year. Um, and so it will list off what kinds of organizations and if there are any other rules or restrictions. This is a good place to see that. I can add this to my cart. And so I just want one because I can only request one at a time. And now I can see that I have four items in my cart because there were three there to begin with. I can click on that cart and scroll down a bit to see that, okay, I had already put in Office Professional Plus because I need a couple licenses of that for some new computers that we're bringing in. And each of those licenses is $40. And I want training for that. So I'm going to check out the Skillsoft training package for Office 2013 Fundamentals. 
which has I think 20 hours of trainings available on the Microsoft Office Suite. And I'm going to get this three, license, three user license uh, QuickBooks Premier. And since folks were interested in training, I also think I need some training on QuickBooks. So I'm going to go up here, and I can search by provider. And I know that there's QuickBooks Made Easy. If I didn't know that this was in here, I could also search by category or solution, and I could search for accounting. And just to see what's here, I'll click on accounting. And it will show me accounting and finance tools. And it also shows me other uh, – so QuickBooks Online, it shows me these tools. And if I keep on scrolling down, it shows me other accounting tools in our catalog, um, Account Edge Pro. But hey, there's this other thing called QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits. And there's a, a donated version – or actually I don't know if there's a donated version anymore. It might just be the discounted version. But QuickBooks Made Easy offers a series of DVDs and handbooks for training people on QuickBooks for nonprofits. If any of you have attended any of our QuickBooks webinars before, most of the time they are led by Greg Boston who teaches these and who has created this series of trainings specifically for nonprofits on how they set up and use their QuickBooks. So I can say I'm going to request this too because I, we really need to train our executive director on how to invoice or how to put these invoices in correctly because every time she does it, it's just a mess, right? So we're going to add that to the cart in my fake organization. And I'm the executive director in my fake organization. So of course I'm messing it up. Um, so I've just added that to my cart as well. If you want to search for other products in the QuickBooks Made Easy catalog, you can search for them by donor or provider and click on QuickBooks Made Easy. And yep, both of the, there's the Essentials. Are these both the same? QuickBooks Made Easy – oh, QuickBooks Online Made Easy. Right, I forgot. So if I'm using the online version, they have a training just for the online version. That's a good reminder to myself. I was forgetting that they had that second one. Um, so you could request those kinds of trainings that are available through the donation program as well. So before I move on to hardware, Kay, were there any questions specifically about requesting software, how to do it, any specific programs that people called out that they wanted to have mentioned? She's shaking her head no. Oh, mobile hotspots, right. Well, that's in hardware, so I will go into that right now. Uh, for folks who are interested in hardware, we have a whole section on hardware. You can browse um, to look at computers and electronics. And we also have a page here called Hardware Favorites. So you could go to either of these. So Computers and Electronics will get you Computers and Electronics, which is mostly hardware, um, or Hardware Favorites. So I'm going to go to the Hardware Favorites page. And this shows me across the top here I've got Powerful Computers, Mobile Beacon, Manufacturer Recertified, and Dell Affiliate Program. Each of these tabs takes me to a different section that focuses on hardware. So this is TechSoup's Refurbished Computer Initiative, which is taking factory refurbished. Most of these are what are considered off-lease, meaning companies like General Motors or Boeing that buy tens of thousands of computers every year. They don't actually buy them most of the time. What they do is they lease them. They lease them for two years, maybe three, and then they go into a refurbished program like this where they are business grade, high tier computers. Um, can be desktops, laptops, monitors, keyboards, the whole shebang. Uh, you can request them separately. So if you just need the tower, the actual desktop PC, you can get that. If you need a bundle with a monitor and keyboard and mouse, you can get that. If you want laptops, there are also tablets. Sometimes we have new tablets. Sometimes we have some Macs. Not super often, uh, but this is basically what's coming from a lot of these huge companies when they go off lease and they have a new lease that brings in new machines. Those two-year-old business grade machines go into a factory refurbishment with some of our partners. Uh, Interconnection is one of them. And this is high-end factory refurbishment, and they do come with warranties. The warranty depends on the partner, so I would recommend looking at those carefully. But here are a couple that were just highlighted on the side as powerful computers. But you can see the full catalog and view based on low tier, mid tier, high tier. You can look at laptops, desktops, bundles. Um, 
So you can do that through this section with the drop-downs here where you can see refurbished laptops, desktops, monitors, manufacturer recertified, refurbished specials, and extended warranties. So if, you, if it comes with a 90-day warranty for example, you can extend that warranty for a small additional fee. Uh, then you can select high tier, mid tier, low tier to search through those. Um, I'll go ahead and just scroll down to see what's here. So in the refurbished laptop computer section, you can see a, you know, a variety of options that are here. Here's a Lenovo ThinkPad. Tells me the details. Comes with Windows 7. Uh, has Office already installed which may be a big money saver if you're having to buy those licenses separately or request donations of them separately. I can click to view the details. It includes a one-year warranty. And these are then shipped directly from that refurbishment partner. So we, aren't, we don't have a big warehouse with all of these computers sitting in the back that are collecting dust. Uh, these are coming directly from that partner as they are being taken out of service from those off-lease company uh, arrangements and getting refurbished, then they are sending them back out to people who request them. And so you can see what it includes. It has an operating system, has Office on it, has security essentials, antivirus stuff already installed, includes a one-year warranty. This is something very important to look at though because some only include a 90-day warranty. And if, you're, um, if your organization is the type to request stuff because you suddenly have the budget, but then to let it sit in a storage closet for six months before you install it, I would recommend with any computer, not just these, but with any, anything that you buy that's uh, electronic hardware, it goes obsolete so quickly and warranties expire so quickly and return periods expire so quickly that anytime you get any electronics, don't let it sit in the closet for six months before you try to start it up. You may not need to set the whole thing up, um, but start it up. Make sure it works because we want to make sure that you've got good hardware. You can check the specifications. And again, you can look at the rules and eligibility and restrictions. And these are really available to pretty much I'd say almost all of the organizations that are eligible through TechSoup for anything. So it's nonprofits and libraries can get it. Um, we have they can request no more of any of ten of any individual product in each request. Um, so you can see, but you can request an unlimited number of these. So if you need 50 computers because you're setting up a, a new computer lab for your um, housing services program for example, or for your homeless shelter and you want to have a computer lab for, for people to use, or workforce development, any number of things, you can be requesting these in, in groups of 10 and get as many as you might need. So that's one hardware option is going through the Refurbished Computer Initiative. I'm going to scroll back up and just get back to that Hardware Favorites page. And I'm going to select Mobile Beacon. So a couple of people were interested in Mobile Hotspots. This is one of my favorite programs because nobody seems to know who Mobile Beacon is, and that doesn't matter because what they provide is so valuable and, and so great. I love it. And um, I'm not a salesperson for them by any sense, but I just think it's a fantastic program because Mobile Beacon Hotspots are using Sprint's 4G network, 4G LTE network that you hear about on TV when Sprint advertises. These are mobile hotspots that you can use to get Internet for one person, five people, ten people. You can request a whole bundle of hotspots. So if you need a bunch, for example, if you are starting, um, you know, maybe you run uh, some senior centers and you want to have Internet available to seniors while they do their uh, computer training or something like that um, in various ends of the building and you might need a few of these hotspots, you can get these bundled for you know, 18 bucks for one, $60 for five, or $108 for 10 hotspots. Now each of these hotspots then requires a, a plan, but the Mobile Beacon plan is $10 per month. And if anybody has looked into what the cost of having a mobile hotspot is through Verizon or Sprint or AT&T directly without any kind of discount, it's usually about $70 to I'd say $90 depending on the plan. Um, and that's just for the monthly fee, not for the actual equipment. That you pay separately. And, and I've done that. And it's very, it adds up to being very expensive. So if you want to have a hotspot for your office, maybe you don't have um, 
DSL or broadband cable in your office and you aren't able to get it for a while because of infrastructure being built. These are a great opportunity or you have people who travel a lot on your team. You have an executive director that's on the road a lot and they need to stay connected. One of these will help. And so you can check the mobile beacon coverage area, which their map is pretty identical to Sprint's coverage area because it is using Sprint's, uh, Sprint's network. So if you know that you've used Sprint for uh, Internet connection with a hotspot before or you use a cell coverage, then you would know that it works there as well. But definitely check the map first because that is um, going to be your biggest determinant. You certainly don't want to request this and get yourself subscribed to a plan that's not going to work for your specific office location. So here you can actually type your address in and check, zoom in on that map to see if you've got coverage where you're at. So I would rec definitely recommend doing that first. And then the um, Internet coverage like I mentioned is $10 per month for 12 months. It's paid in one chunk though, so it's not paid $10 at a time. You pay the $120 directly to Mobile Beacon, but then you've got 12 months of uninterrupted 4G LTE connection. Um, and it's with, like I said, it's with Sprint's LTE network, so a good reputable network. That is one option for the Mobile Beacon hotspots. I'm going to go back to the hardware section one more time. Are there any questions coming in, Kay or Susan, that are related to that or the refurbished computer program that I mentioned already? Okay. They're shaking their head no. So I hope you're not bored to tears out there. <laughs> Feel free to chat in if, if there are things you want to be knowing because I can be covering different stuff. Um, now the Dell Affiliate Program is pretty new to our catalog and I'm excited to mention it. And there is actually one other one I'm going to mention too after this that's hardware related. Um, so the Dell Program is a different model than what we typ typically have had where we have donor partners that donate their products or substantially discount them, like 96% discount kind of discounts, um, and where we just charge a small admin fee. The Dell program is different in that you pay a $10 admin fee to TechSoup and it gets you access to what they call their affiliate program, which is for kind of bulk purchasing. Now you don't have to bulk purchase, but it basically means that all of TechSoup members get access to bulk pricing which gives us up to 45% discount on the Dell catalog, the, like the whole Dell catalog. Now some parts of it are only going to be 5% discounted, like they have high-end digital SLR cameras. Those don't, send, don't tend to be super discounted. But other parts are up to 45% off. So by joining the Dell Affiliate Program, you pay that one-time $10 admin fee that gets you access. It gets you kind of exclusive links to sections of their site that you can't just view publicly that allows you to see discounted Optiplex, Latitudes, uh, the, the standard business grade brand new Dell computers. So that's laptops, workstations, servers. Um, so you can see down here where it says up to 39% off these ones, 10 an extra 10% off off of select XPX laptops and Inspire and desktops and laptops. So that's 39 and an extra 10% off. And then an extra 5% off select Dell Electronics and Accessories. They have laptop bags and backpacks and, and their catalog is crazy. I mean huge crazy in a good way. Um, so when you're looking through, you can't actually go to their site and see what all those discounts will be up front. And this is where it's a little bit of a mystery. But if you know that you're going to be replacing your hardware and you know you want to get a new spate of Dell hardware, I mean we're all sitting here and a TechSoup on our Dell Latitude uh, E7240 laptops. We have an army of them here. And our staff who sits at desktops are all using uh, Dell Optiplexes and Latitudes. If you know that you're going to be doing a big purchase, this $10 is a drop in the bucket for what you'll save. So it's a great opportunity to see these things and access those discounts. But unfortunately, you can't actually browse the full catalog yourself. If you're subscribed to our emails, we do a lot of highlighting of specific ones that become available and what those specific discounts are at a given time just so that you're aware of, kind of how much you'd save as compared to retail. But there's no way for us to show you the whole catalog and what the discounts look like um, without actually giving you 
full access to the catalog. And the only way that we are able to keep paying our bills as a nonprofit is to charge that small admin fee for that access so that we are really community purchasing essentially to get that pricing through Dell. So that's one other program. There's a similar program that I'm going to show you that's not actually listed in the hardware section because it's not just hardware. It's hardware and software and other gear and educational supplies. So I'm going to go to a donor provider called JourneyEd. If any of you are in educational programming uh, or your nonprofit mission or library mission is more around education, you may have heard of JourneyEd before. JourneyEd is a very similar model to the Dell model where you pay in this case a $5 admin fee and it gets access to the JourneyEd website with discounts that typically were only offered to actual educators. So K-12 and higher education institutions had access to discounts. Now their catalog uh, has discounted rates. Um, for example, Camtasia we use in-house for editing our videos. I think the regular rate for Camtasia is $299, and directly through the company that makes it, they, they discount it for nonprofits to $250. Through JourneyEd, it cost $178.99 or something like that. It was, it was more than $60, $70 in savings, even compared to the regular nonprofit price that that company gave directly. They have a lot of audio-visual equipment, so they have projectors and digital cameras, video cameras, keyboards, mixers, all kinds of things that you might need for a stage setup. If you are a church and you need mics and soundboards and projectors for your services, they have got a lot of that stuff. They also have a lot of really great classroom uh, packages. So if you need science kits or you know, like for example, if you are a Boys and Girls Club or a YMCA and you do after school programming, or you run a summer camp, JourneyEd has a ton of really great um, products that are geared toward education, classroom packs of things, and, um, and lots of other software that you can access. So I mean, you can access Adobe Creative Cloud through us directly, or you can access it through JourneyEd because sometimes they run a special that's even less than what our donation is with or our program is with the Adobe Creative Cloud. So a lot of great options. And again, this is only a $5 admin fee that gets you access to this full catalog. But again, I can't show you the whole catalog uh, because that's, that's what you get the discounts for. But you can see some they have screenshots so you can see uh, you know, there's a lot of graphic design tools like Corel Draw. So for those of you who like Corel Draw, instead of, um, instead of using Adobe InDesign for example, they have this. If you prefer WordPerfect instead of using Microsoft Office, great deals on that. Like I mentioned projectors. They have tablets. We also have some tablets in our refurbished computer initiative, sometimes brand new tablets too. And Dell also has some tablets available in their catalog. So look around and compare options. But they've got iPads, lots of great things that are available in these. And it, again, it's only $5 to gain access to all of this. And that link lasts you for the whole year. So if you know that you are going to need a couple of things now, well that same link is going to be available to you to use six months from now when you know you might need some other things. So I recommend definitely checking that out as another option for both hardware and software. So. Any other questions before I move on to webinars and events and other training resources? Looks like Kay is in mid-response to a question currently on screen. Any, um, anything that I would be useful for the whole audience to hear that's coming in in the questions? Shaking her head no. Okay. <laughs> so I will keep on keeping on, but feel free to keep those questions coming in. Um, oh, somebody was asking about projectors. Um, let me go back down to the description. Uh, JourneyEd is the only source of our projectors right now. Uh, Dell sometimes has projectors come in and out of their uh, other equipment and accessories category. So either of these programs could offer you some options. There is no way to directly price compare without paying the $5 admin fee to see all of the variety of projectors. They probably had 80 projectors in there when I looked the last time. Um, and it goes in and out depending on you know, 
time. Things become obsolete and they move. They get new stock all the time too. So there's no way to really show you what all the projectors look like. But there are a lot of projectors in there. Um, Mac software, Mac hardware. Sounds like somebody's asking about Macs. We TechSoup. Unfortunately, we have not had uh, the ability to have a relationship directly with Apple to get Mac hardware donated. We keep trying. We will keep trying to. But so far that has not been successful. But you can find um, occasionally in our hardware favorites, actually the best easiest way to search it honestly is just to type Mac. And you can, type, you can see I've searched Mac hardware recently. But if you just type Mac in our search bar up here, or whatever it is that you're looking for, you'll see different products that pop up. Many of these are software for Macs. So you can see what Mac products are available, antivirus for Mac, Adobe Acrobat for Mac. Um, once in a while, and there's a lot of, a lot of little uh, pages here of Mac specific things. Sometimes you'll see Mac tablets, Mac computers. Not that often do we get the actual hardware in. Um, Ultralingua is a translation product. And you can pick the language. So if you know that you work with an audience that needs a specific translation pretty frequently, like you have a big Vietnamese population and you're located in San Jose and there's a big, big population there that needs it, you can get Ultralingua for Mac. Um, so our site is really deep. It's hard to come across everything. But um, you'll see Mac stuff. But right now it doesn't look like we have any specific products uh, or specific hardware that's Mac in the catalog. Um, in the JourneyEd catalog, they sometimes have Mac as well. But like I, I pointed out, the iPads that were on there, they had a couple of iPads. I don't know if they have Mac desktops right now or Mac laptops. So we would have to, you'd have to actually look at the, the donation directly if you, if you went ahead with the $5 uh, admin fee to see what they have. And it, again, it changes all the time. So I've seen Mac stuff in there in the past. Software-wise, we have a Mac version for most of our big products like Microsoft has a Mac version. QuickBooks has a version for Macs. Um, but we don't have a whole lot of hardware simply because we just don't have the, the vendor relationship with Apple that I wish we did. But we keep trying. And we will keep on for those who want to be using Macs. Okay, any other questions that I should get before I move into community training, education events type stuff? Okay, so we've looked at the Get Products and Services tab pretty thoroughly. Uh, if you are a specific organization type like a library or a faith-based organization church, we have – or any of these other ones for example, but these ones in particular, libraries, um, foundations, uh, religious organizations. We have pages that we've set up that have products that are very specifically tailored to your needs. So for example, if you're joining us from a library today, and I click on the Libraries page, you can scroll down and see what are the most popular products that libraries are requesting, and maybe a couple that are specific to library needs. You can also see webinars that are related to library topics. Um, topics that are coming in from our TechSoup for Libraries website, which is a whole other website that we have that's full of resources. Um, so you can find topics and products that are more tailored to your organization needs that might be a little bit more specific. So that's one other way to browse the site is to browse by organization type. If you come to our site and you know, man, I really need a new donor database, you can click on Donor and Grants Management and see what kinds of donor databases we have in our catalog right now. This changes a lot. They all change a lot because we get a lot of things in SOC. Um, you know, things rotate and we get new product partners all the time. So if you haven't seen something you need, keep checking back. So you can browse by specific categories. Like if you need a new security product, you can see what we have. Okay, so they've got Symantec Norton. Oh, but they also have Bitdefender. Okay. And you can weigh the differences and compare prices and see what's really going to fit your needs. So those are really the biggest ways to browse our site, to look for hardware software, browsing by donor or provider, by category or solution, by organization type. Those are the, the big ways to kind of find your way around the product donations. Now I also showed that you can search. And let me search one more time. So 
I'm going to put Mac in there one more time just to show you that I showed the product donations that show up on the main page. But if you look here, there's all these other tabs, articles and how-tos, webinars, community, and other resources. For any given term, you'll get articles and how-tos. So all kinds of things. They may be really closely related to Mac. They may be more generic where they apply to Macs and PCs. But whatever the topic is, you'll find related content. Um, that's one way to see what kinds of webinars are already archived and what kinds of articles and how-tos we already have on our site that you can just watch on demand. But if you want to see what's coming up, you can either go to Community and select Events, or you can go to Resources and select Webinars, and it actually takes you to the same exact page. And you can see not only webinars, but you can see other kinds of events as well. So for example, we have OneNote for Beginners coming up on Thursday where you can sign up to come to that event and join us for a webinar just like you are now. You can also click this tab to see what other upcoming events are coming. So oh look, video editing and production in Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you want to know how to vet, edit videos in Adobe Premiere Pro, we're doing a training on that next Tuesday. If you want to know about library privacy, we're doing that next Wednesday. So these are webinars mostly that are up in this featured section. Down here on this calendar, we have a host of different things. So for example, you can see that OneNote for Beginners, but you can also see a live seminar that's in person in Portland, Maine. So if you happen to be in Portland, Maine, this QuickBooks Made Easy seminar, it's a full day long seminar is available. You can also see conferences that some of our donor partners are putting on. So there's a GrantStation conference in New York. You can see meetups, which for some reason I'm not seeing the Net Squared meetups on here, but I'll go back a month just to show May because typically they're in here. I don't know why they're not showing up, but they're not at the moment. But you can also see meetups on different topics happening all around the world. So for example, in Naples, Florida, your organization can run smoother, faster, cheaper. Most of these are free meetups that are happening every month in different cities around the country. Uh, I don't know who spelled Los Angeles this way, but there was an event in Los Angeles <laughs> last month. I did not put that in there. but. Um, Pittsburgh had bagels and bites, and they must talk about some kind of technology. And if you click through, it's going to open up that page wherever it is to show you what the actual topic is, who's going, who went, who's speaking, and you can decide whether you want to RSVP for these kinds of events or not. But these are mostly run by our Net Squared organizers around the world. And we have them in I think it's 50 some cities around the world that there are meetups. You'll see Austin, D.C., Victoria, Canada, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Kitchener. I don't know where Kitchener is. Is that a place in Canada? <laughs> I don't know. Burlington, I guess Vermont. Um, but you can go and look at anything that's available. See if there's a meetup or an event. These are also often trainings that involve beer very frequently because most of them are happy hours. So. But you can go and find trainings. You can find meetups. And have fun meeting other people who are doing good work. And these are, these are geared toward people who are working in the social sector, at libraries, at nonprofits, uh, doing good work, and need to know more about using technologies. So they may have a different topic every month. So for example, Tech for Good, BlackBot is coming. So they did a webinar on BlackBot. So if you are using Razor's Edge as a fundraising tool, or BlackBot's email now, they probably would have been a good place to go if you were located in Vancouver. And this is a great way to meet other people who could help you with your technology decisions or with technology implementation. If you are looking for experts, they can often connect you to other people who are experts. So this is where we can find webinars, events, and trainings. If you keep scrolling down this really, really long page, you can now see the most recent webinars in reverse chronological order, so last week's Microsoft PowerPoint for Beginners archive is on this page. You can keep scrolling down to see them in order, reverse order of when they were created. But you can also do the same thing that you can do on the rest of our site and browse by category. So if you want to know what have they done lately on communications, because our, we have a new communications manager and she needs some training and help on some stuff. So what have they done? Okay, communications, they did a training on presentations with PowerPoint. They did a training on story makers, how to use photos to tell your organization's story. You can look through these. Oh, there's a training on Instagram, 
cool. Maybe we want to learn about Instagram. And you can click into any of these and easily play back that webinar in its entirety if you want to. You can also scroll down and click through the slide share. So you're watching the presentation that we gave last week. I don't know how it shows up shown on screen, but you, know, you can see this front end stuff, but then oh look, there's there's a whole presentation here that I can access. And if you go, if you click on this little in link, it'll take you direct, directly to SlideShare where you can see the whole thing. And you can download the whole slide deck and keep it for yourself and refer to it later. So say, oh, okay, here's how to insert media into PowerPoint. Um, and then you can see other related articles, related blog posts, related webinars that appear on the sidebar of every page on our site. If there are related products, so for example, this was on PowerPoint, so you can get to that product from these pages too. So it's a great deep resource to see what kinds of, of on-demand trainings there are directly on our site on any number of topics. You know, mobile, if you need operating systems, gee, we need to upgrade to Windows 10. Uh, we've got a lot deep in here that you can find. Um, before we wrap up, so I showed how to put things in your cart. I showed webinars and events and trainings. I did want to highlight, I mentioned Skillsoft earlier, but I wanted to highlight a couple of other training related options. So Skillsoft is the donor that offers a variety of trainings. Um, mostly right now their, their trainings available are on Microsoft Office Suite. And I'm not sure if they have anything else in there right now, but they, add, they will be adding to it over time. So that's one option for trainings. Uh, for those of you that have Microsoft donations already and you want deeper training on how to use any of the products you have from Windows operating systems to Microsoft servers, if you've requested them through TechSoup and have all of the, the Microsoft donations through TechSoup have Software Assurance included. And Software Assurance is a benefit that allows you to access a full suite of e-learnings directly through Microsoft. You, and I mean it's like hundreds and hundreds of hours of trainings that are on-demand video you can walk through at your own pace. And um, everything from SQL Server complicated IT things to you know, the basics of using Word. So, I would recommend checking out what you already have included with some of your donations too. Um, those are a couple of the big ones. Am I missing any other training specific products? We used to have a couple of others and I'm not remembering if we have – oh, Atomic Training. I forgot about Atomic Training. Atomic Training has a whole bunch of trainings available too. And um, this is you know, one month subscription pass for 5 bucks, and it gives you access to over 150 software applications that you can be trained on. And I believe that you can access a full list of their uh, training, what, what they have available in their training catalog on their website. I can see if I can find um, a link to that. But they also have one on assistive technology products. So if you work with patrons that need to use things like Dragon Naturally for, uh, or screen readers or tablets, because they, you know, for, for visual impairments and, and they or low visibility, low vision patrons or, or clients, they have trainings on how to use those technologies as well. So this is just one other training opportunity. That's not us doing the training, but it gives you access to these trainings for a one month subscription. And I'm pretty sure you can request this repeatedly. So you could get a one month subscription, try it out. If you love it, you can request it again to get more trainings. So um, anyway, these are some training options. And like I mentioned before, we are almost at the top of the hour. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Um, I did show how to put these items in your cart. You walk through that process to uh, confirm that you are eligible. It will flag items for you. If you aren't, you check off that you agree to the terms, which typically the terms are just standard sort of anti-discrimination terms. Um, shipping and delivery, you are most likely going to be electronically downloading any software product that you receive through TechSoup. If it's a hardware product, that would be shipped to you in, real, in the real world in a box. But most of the uh, software products are delivered electronically. Your review and enter your payment info. Uh, if you need to pay by check, 
Know that you won't actually receive any fulfillment until that check is received and processed through TechSoup. So your quickest way to get products in hand is to use some type of credit card payment. And you get confirmation. Depending on the product, you may get a confirmation email from us. You may also get a confirmation email from that vendor saying, here's how to now access your donation. And that will go to the email address registered with your organization. So it won't go to Becky at TechSoup. It will go to info at TechSoup or whatever, whatever email address I used when I registered my organization. So you want to make sure that that's an email address you're checking regularly so you know where to find your, your um, donation fulfillment. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. It looks like all the questions in the chat have been answered. But know that there is a full slide deck that's going to be sent to you that includes a lot of these different programs that I called out, um, and a lot of the resources I highlighted including the NetSquared meetups. You can go directly to netsquared.org to find those as well. Um, and it also has helpful links like that link to the programs affected by TechSoup's fiscal year end, links to our eligibility and restrictions section, ways to find your donor history and request history, um, and also things like the product donation FAQ to continue answering your questions. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and just ask you to take a moment and tell us one thing you learned today that you're going to take back and try to implement or do for your organization when it comes to requesting donations. And we hope that you'll share this information with your friends and colleagues who could benefit from accessing donations too. We would also invite you to take that post-event survey when you exit so we can continue to improve these. And while you do that, I'm going to just show you what's coming up. I mentioned a couple of them earlier. We have one note for beginners this Thursday. Next week we have three webinars in a row. We've got Adobe Premiere for Video Editing and Production. We have Library Privacy. So if you're with a library, this is a great topic for you to come and join. And then we have Helping Children Build Literacy Skills for the Digital Age. So if you work with children around literacy, definitely join us uh, for that event. And you'll see more webinars to come soon. So we thank you all for joining us today. Thank you to Kay and Susan for their help on the back end. And thank you to our participants for helping urge the direction of this webinar with your votes. And thank you lastly to ReadyTalk for providing the use of the platform so that we can continue to provide these webinars to you on a regular basis. If you're interested in presenting your own webinars, you can check out their donation program at TechSoup.org slash ReadyTalk. And again, a reminder to please let us know what you thought of today's event by taking that post-event survey that pops up when we close out of this event. Thank you so much everyone, and have a great day. Bye-bye.